As a freelance filmmaker, do you ever feel like you're lucky enough to be working in such a stable and secure profession where you never have to worry about money or your financial future? Yeah, me neither. Documentary filmmaking is the most interesting possible thing I could think of doing with my life, and I have no plans to do anything else anytime soon. But if you're looking to get rich, there are a lot of easier ways to do it out there. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! With that said, you can actually make some really good money doing this work, and I've been making a pretty good living with only a camera for over a decade now. The problem is the long game. With no pensions, no matched 401k payments from your employer, and just generally no retirement plan of any sort for us freelancers, are we just doomed to struggle financially forever? That's exactly what I've been asking myself lately, and so I went on a bit of a financial education bender this month and read six of the internet's favorite finance books recommended by people like Ali Abdal, Tim Ferriss, Matt Diavella, and Alex Hormozzi to see if there was any chance of retiring well while still doing what I love. Somewhat surprisingly, I found the answer is yes, it is possible, but only if you make smart moves with your money. And that's exactly what this video is all about. The secrets from the internet's favorite finance books that filmmakers can use to get wealthy. And to save you some time, at the end of the video, I'll tell you which of these three books you should read above the rest to get you most of what you need to know in order to make smart money choices. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. So right off the bat, I should say that I am not a money-oriented person and my formal financial and business education is essentially zero. So talk to a professional before doing anything with your money. I studied literature at school and for most of my adult life, I've either been a nomadic backpacker slash manual laborer or a freelance photographer and filmmaker. When I was starting out, I had no interest in financial planning and I was just happy to go from job to job and it was all doable because I lived a really cheap lifestyle. And speaking of keeping things cheap, the sponsor of today's video is Audio, the most affordable royalty-free music solution I've personally found, but more on them later. How's that for a plug? Anyways, in the last couple of years, the cost of everything seems to have shot through the roof. The inflation rate reached 3.3%. Those costs will keep going up. Another rise in inflation. Prices continue just to skyrocket. I mean, the average home price in Toronto where I live is now up to $1.2 million. And because of that, I've been thinking more about what the end game is and how I can make sure that I can keep doing what I love well into old age without needing to collect food stamps. So I scoured YouTube for financial book recommendations and found six books that everyone seems to be talking about. And then I read all of them on a series of airport layovers and long haul flights. The book I started with was The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley and Sarah Stanley Fowler for no real reason other than the fact that it had a catchy title. The Millionaire Next Door basically focuses on breaking down the myth of what rich people are really living like. You know, they're not all driving Ferraris and owning huge mansions. Like maybe Shaq lives like that. <laughs> But the point of this book is that most millionaires are much more subtle with their wealth and they don't get rich by spending tons of money. I think the stat was that the average millionaire drives like a four-year-old car with 50,000 miles on it, not a Bugatti fresh off the showroom floor. Mr. Simpson? You don't look so rich. Don't let the haircut fool you. I'm exceedingly wealthy. Get a load of the ball job, Marge. That's a pretty good summary of this book. Rich people buy things that they can easily afford, and the ones who stay rich for the long term don't buy mink coats or Bengal tigers or whatever. Mike Tyson was making 30 million a fight and still filed for bankruptcy, but people who are wealthy for a long time do the opposite. So the lesson here for filmmakers is don't buy a tiger. That's good advice. I'm kidding, obviously, but only kind of. It's really easy to land a big job and then immediately run out and grab an iMac or a Mac Studio or a full FX9 kit or whatever on credit when it's really beyond what we can comfortably afford. You don't get rich by spending more than you earn. So if I took one thing away from this book, it's that to get wealthy and stay wealthy, you should only buy things that you can really pay for. And don't buy a tiger. <laughs> The next book on this list was probably my favorite of them all, and that was The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. This isn't a book about how to invest or telling you not to spend money on takeout or coffee. Instead, it looks at our psychological connection to money and how to develop a healthy relationship to it. It's a great read and I'd recommend it to everyone, but I'll just keep this to a few of my favorite points. Probably the most important thing I took away from this book was the redefining of what money is actually good for in life, and that's buying us options. We've all heard the saying that money equals 
equals freedom, but maybe a better saying could be money equals options. Being financially comfortable isn't about buying a bunch of stuff or having more than other people. It's about being able to pursue the things you're interested in and do the things that make you happy. The second thing I loved in this book is the idea of figuring out what enough money looks like for you. It can be very easy to have our default answer to this be more, but that's only gonna lead to you never being satisfied. Instead, figure out how much money you really need to feel like you have options in life to do the things that are important to you and just generally live the life you want. Sure, it would be great to be a billionaire with a yacht, but that's pretty unlikely for most of us. So instead of always just wanting more, put a number on what enough looks like and then work towards it. I love that idea and I immediately broke it down for myself and realized that I'm actually more or less there now, which has been kind of a liberating thought and it means that I might actually end up turning down more work that I'm not inspired by this year. The next book I read was I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi, who I remember being on a bunch of podcasts when this book came out 10 years ago. This is a really great primer to how to manage your money better so you can actually save. And there's way too much to cover in detail without this video getting out of control, but it goes into how to cut your costs, how to keep a good credit score, and a ton of other really practical advice that make it worth reading, especially if you don't know anything about personal finance. But of everything he goes into, there were two things in this book that made the most sense to me as a freelance filmmaker. The first is the practice of separating your bank accounts and then automating your savings. Rather than just dump all your money into a checking account and then sort of spend it as you need to, the better approach is to open multiple accounts and keep your money separate so you know what you're actually spending. Now, most of us open a savings and a checking account early on in life, and that's about it. But since accounts are basically free to open, why not be more organized? Put all your money into one central business account and then pay yourself a salary into your checking every month to cover all your expenses. That stops the urge just to spend and spend because you perceive it as this like single pile of money and it makes it much easier to keep your spending under control. Also, set up automatic monthly withdrawals into your savings accounts as well so you resist the urge to pick up a new drone instead of save. The other nugget of gold in there is to realize that investing money isn't just for rich people and that everyone, including filmmakers, should learn how to invest their money properly. And speaking of saving money, the sponsor of this video is Audio. Seamless transition. I've been using audio for 100% of the music for this channel for a long time now, and I even just scored an entire short film using nothing but their music. I could go on and on about how they've got a really well curated list of thousands of tracks and their ever growing sound effects library, and even their new audio originals program, which are songs that you can't get anywhere else online. But since this video is about money, let's keep it on theme. If you want to be smarter with your money, then audio is just hands down the best deal I've ever found when it comes to getting high quality royalty free music for your projects. Most of the other services out there, and I've used pretty much all of them, start at around $200 for a membership, and that's real money. But if you follow the link in the description and use the code LUKE70, you'll save 70% and get a full year of their pro plan with unlimited downloads for just $59, which is insane. You're not going to find a better value for money when it comes to royalty-free music, so if you want to be smarter with your finances, this is an amazing place to start. Okay, back to the video. After I finished I Will Teach You To Be Rich, I read the old classic Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is more or less impossible to ignore if you Google best personal finance books. It was written almost 90 years ago and has sold millions and millions of copies, and despite the fact that the writer probably made up a lot of the stuff about his relationships with the billionaires he talks about, it's still at the top of a lot of financial reading lists. I'm not gonna lie, the style is kind of outdated these days, but the basic summary is that your mindset is the most important thing when it comes to being successful. You have to set goals and then believe you can accomplish them and then according to the book the world will just get out of your way as you coast on to your millions. Now obviously that's a bit of a simplistic breakdown and I've personally never known the modern world to get out of the way of anything. Okay, you're doing it wrong. But the core ideas are still surprisingly relevant to filmmaking. You need to set clear goals on what you want to accomplish. So maybe what clients you want to work for or what rates you want to charge or setting a firm deadline for finishing an edit and then believe it's possible and then actually go out and do it. Of all the books on this list, I'd personally probably put this one near the bottom just because it's a little bit over the top and it's probably full of a bunch of made up conversations. But the fundamental mental idea behind it definitely made sense to me after more than 10 years in this business. Let me know in the comments if you disagree though. 
Moving on is a book I loved, and that's The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. You can basically break down this book into three steps. Spend more than you earn, avoid debt, and invest the rest. I feel like the financial industry does everything possible to make things hard to understand for normal people, so hearing it broken down like this makes it seem like getting wealthy is actually doable because it really is. Even though I like to joke about being a broke filmmaker, there is some really good money to be made in this industry. I mean, I've been paid up to $4,000 a day on some outlier jobs, but if you wanna save, you have to figure out how not to spend it all. There's a great story in the book that goes like this. Two childhood friends grew up and went their own ways. One became a powerful advisor to the king and the other became a monk. When they met years later, the minister feels bad for his friend and said, if you learn to serve the king, you wouldn't need to live on rice and beans. But then the monk only replied, if you learn to live on rice and beans, you wouldn't need to serve the king. As filmmakers, not serving the king might mean turning down that corporate job or that wedding shoot you don't really wanna do because you've kept your costs low enough so that you don't need to do them. Or going back to the psychology of money, once you figured out what enough means for you, you've gained your freedom. The last book on this list is all about investing and taking away the mystery behind it. And that's The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John Bogle. The stock market looks crazy complicated and most of the time the financial industry wants it to feel that way so that you'll pay advisors to do it for you. But the truth is that it's not really that complicated and anyone can learn to invest easily in a way that beats inflation and is more or less low risk. Basically, instead of trying to pick stocks that might promise huge payouts but also put you at risk of losing everything, you just invest in the overall stock market through index funds that track the health of the economy in general. Investing this way won't magically guarantee a thousand percent returns like if you do invested in Apple or bought Tesla stock back in the day, but it does offer reliable returns over time. You're not gonna flip millions overnight, but if you just invest and then wait, over the long term, you'll come out on top over the vast majority of people who try and time the market. So instead of trying to get in on that new cryptocurrency and possibly losing half of your money in a few months, i.e. me in 2021 buying Bitcoin, just bet that on a long enough timeline, the economy will grow. There's gonna be ups and downs and nothing is guaranteed, but this is the single safest way to make your money grow over time. Of course, it's entirely possible that the whole global economy collapses and your investments go down with it, but honestly, if that happens, we've all got bigger problems anyways. So after reading six books in a month, which ones were worth it? Well, first off, start by reading The Psychology of Money, then The Simple Path to Wealth, and then The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. These three are enough to have a good sense of how to think about money, how money can translate into wealth, and then how to actually make your money grow. I'm really glad I read all these books, honestly, but just these three would have gotten me 80% of the way there. So to wrap up here, let's distill all this into a simple, coherent financial plan for filmmakers. First off, reframe the way you think about money. Realize what money's real function is in society, which is to give you options. Figure out what's enough for you and don't take risks with your money that keep you up at night and negatively affect your happiness. Organize your banking to stop you from overspending and just generally spend less than you earn. Then take the extra money and save it. Put some into an emergency fund until you have like three to six months worth of cash to cover you in an emergency, and then put some more into a gear and project fund, and then invest all the rest. Don't try and play the stock market, just put your money into the market in general through index funds, and then don't touch it. Now repeat this process for your whole adult life, let compound interest do the heavy lifting, and ignore the news cycle. Now, of course there are more ways to get rich, and if you have the mind for it, there are all sorts of businesses and real estate opportunities that you can get into. But I'm personally not really wired like that, and for me, I just want a simple system that I can follow without thinking about it too much. I personally don't really want to think about money. I want to think about my filmmaking career and running this YouTube channel. But I also want to have options later in life, and I'm guessing that you do too. So just take care of these financial basics and then get back to doing what you love. See ya!